given the makeup of our audience, Dr. Byron's often referred to smart guys. The reality is there are many, many smart girls working with him as well. And I don't want anybody to think that geologists are all guys. In fact, some of the finest geology students and professors at Western Michigan University are in fact women. Let me just so, say that guys means humans. <laughs> I knew you weren't trying to put down the male in any way, but I just thought I'd mention it. I'm sure if anybody has a uh, question that Dr. Barnes would take a few minutes to answer privately or you know, in front of you. I sure have one question that came to mind. Um, how would how do you foresee this might affect uh, what we're going to be doing with carbon credits? Would companies then be able to claim carbon credits by pumping this, this gas away into uh, that's uh, the, the answer to that question is a little bit longer than you all probably want to hear, but the bottom line is that there will be uh, industries that will be targeted for emissions reduction, mm -hmm. and they will be expected to reduce their emissions and will not be given credit for what they will simply be expected to reduce. Um, it's more complicated than we have time to talk about, but the cap and trade component of all this is fundamental. It costs you more to dispose of CO2 than it does to go to have it go out of your smokestack. Why in the hell would you not let it go out of your smokestack? Sir. In the, in the state or just the U.S. in general, is there a wide enough capacity for storage that meets the expected output? Well, a lot of what's been done in the last four or five years has been to simply establish the feasibility of all of this. You know, we've got this gigantic uh, mass of CO2 being generated, even if you just consider stationary point sources, you don't even think about automobiles or other loads of CO2 emissions that aren't feasible for direct capture. Um, so one of the fu fundamental uh, objectives of the DOE-funded projects, these carbon, uh, regional carbon sequestration partnerships, was to simply evaluate, does it make any sense to think, you know, is there 100 times less pore space than we're going to be producing in five years? Well, this is not to me. Well, the, the bottom line is that Michigan is quite noteworthy. It's not, it's not the most significant CO2 sequestration resource in the country, but it's very noteworthy. Uh, and what, what we think we've confidently documented is hundreds of years of potential. Again, not that we would use those hundred years, but that it gives us a, a margin of error. Uh, but nationally, anyway, in the United States, there would appear to be a comparable margin of error, such that sequestration is very feasible. As it turns out, there is as much waste water pumped into rock formations in the subsurface now, right now, as there would be CO2 pumped into the subsurface from stationary point sources. You never you didn't even know that. I mean, there's waste water. There's the nastiest stuff you can think of being pumped down wells, particularly to this formation I talked about at the end. Uh, I had to run through it. But there's an awful lot of stuff that's being pumped in the subsurface. Of course, that's an issue because you 